Uh, I will calculate the total number of collisions between oxygen molecules and nitrogen molecules uh, in a typical lecture room at the Central Washington University uh, within a uh, 50 minute uh, time period. Uh, this is a uh, actual exam question on kinetics. Uh, first, we need to compute the total collisional frequency per unit volume, all right? And then multiply that by the actual volume of the actual room, uh, which is uh, roughly 5.5 by 5.5 by 3 cubic meter. So 5.5 times 5.5 times 3, roughly 90 cubic meter. And this is equivalent to 50 minutes. So how do we get the total collisional frequencies per unit volume? We we'll have to look at a single O2 molecule here. So assuming this O2 is moving at this speed, VO2, and within a time period, delta T, the distance this O2 molecule travels is equal to the speed of O2 times delta T. All right, and then let's uh, look at this uh, three nitrogen molecules, A, B, and C. So during the travel of the O2, we can tell immediately this O2 will not collide with nitrogen to A, it will not collide to nitrogen molecule B, but it will collide to nitrogen molecule C. Why do we know that? We actually can just uh, use this uh, dashed line circles to represent this O2 at uh, different positions during the travel. And we can see over here, there's no overlap between these two, no overlap, but there's overlap. So really, the question uh, regarding the number of collisions this O2 experiences is, we just need to count the number of nitrogen molecules with their centers reside in a certain area. And how do we know what the area is? We can say, well, what if we have a nitrogen molecule here? So this nitrogen 2 is just a tangent to the O2. So basically, if the nitrogen 2 is a bit further away, no collisions. If the nitrogen 2 is closer to the trajectory, there will be a collision. And we do know that uh, over here, we can easily compute the distance between the center of the nitrogen 2 molecule and the center of the O2 molecule, which is just RO2 plus RN2. This is the radius of N2, this is the radius of uh, O2, this is the radius of N2. But you may ask, they are not spheres. Okay, we make approximations. We treat this O2 and N2 molecules as spheres, and we estimate their radius. I say this is roughly two angstroms, and this is roughly two angstroms. Well, you may wonder, maybe it's three or four, it doesn't matter. Our goal is to actually estimate the order of magnitude of the number of collisions between O2 and N2. All right, so let's just assume the radius of O2 and the radius of N2 are both two angstroms. And then basically, this, the number of collisions this O2 experiences can be converted to a simple physics question. How many nitrogen 2 molecules have their centers reside inside this area. And don't forget, this is a trajectory, so we basically are looking at a, not just a circle. This is a circle. We are looking at a cylinder here. So basically, we just need to count uh, the number of nitrogen molecules with their centers residing inside this cylindrical volume. And how do we get this volume of the cylinder? We have the length of the cylinder, we have the area, this shaded area, it's called collisional sectional area, so we got this, and then we have the volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is simply VO2 times delta T times sigma. All right, we're not done yet because we have so many O2 molecules, so it's better to just use the average 
speed of all those O2 molecules. And again, at the beginning we assumed the nitrogen molecules are not moving at all, but uh, they are moving in the real world, so we have to use the relative speed. So it's going to be the relative speed between O2 and N2, and there's a simple equation for that. The re uh, relative speed is 8 kBT over pi mu. Mu is the reduced mass. In this case, 1 over mu is 1 over the mass of O2 plus the 1 over the mass of N2. So we have uh, this mu here times delta T times uh, sigma. All right, so uh, uh, that's the volume of this cylinder. We have this uh, a circular area multiplied by the length of the cylinder. But then how do we know how many natural molecules are inside this cylinder. We do not know unless we know the number density of the nitrogen two molecules. We actually can calculate the number of nitrogen molecules per unit volume. So we'll do that. Um, I'm gonna have to erase this. It's gonna be, again, eight kBT over pi mu times delta T times the relational uh, sectional area and then times the number density. So again, we'll use this notation, the number of nitrogen two molecule per unit volume. We can compute that this way. And yeah, later I'll show you how to do this. It's just very simple. PV equals RT equation should be used to compute this. And uh, this whole thing divided by delta T, that's the collisional frequency of that single O2 molecule. And then we do this, we multiply that by the number of O2 molecules inside the lecture room, and this will give you, again, the total collisional frequency between O2 and N2. However, this is an extensive property it's proportional to the volume of the room. So I want to do this. That will give you actually the total collisional frequency per unit volume, okay? And also, you will see a bit later, it's very easy to compute this number density of nitrogen and the number density of O2. And once we get this done, we multiply this whole thing by the volume of the room, which is nine zero cubic meter, and then the time period 3,000 seconds, we'll get the total number of frequencies. All right, so let's work on this. First, delta T and delta T cancel. All right, and then we're gonna work on this. I will multiply this KB by Avogadro constant to get R. I will multiply this mu to convert the uh, mass of a single molecule to actually the mass of one more molecule. So really, it's just uh, eight times RT times pi, and then mu should be, again, in uh, kilogram per mole. And uh, what's the mass of uh, O2? 32 AMU, N2, 28 AMU. So if you do the computation, mu is roughly 15. I'm using 1 over 30 plus 1 over 30 to get 1 over 15, so it's roughly 1, 5 AMU, and this is converted to 0 0.015 kilogram per mole. Why not grams? Kilogram is the SI unit of mass. So we're gonna use this 0 0.015 kilogram per mole here. All right, and then we'll be able to compute the relative speed between O2 and N2, basically just eight times 8.3 times, uh, let's say temperature is 300 uh, Kelvin, and the pi is uh, 3.14 and times 0 0.015. And I'm pretty sure the unit will be meter per second because I used the SI unit for every single number inside the square root. Uh, if you do this uh, 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 computation, you can, you can easily estimate this guy divided by, that's roughly 100, divided by this, uh, that would be uh, 6 
thousand, six thousand times uh, this uh, sixty-four. It's going to be roughly, uh, I think, uh, uh, this, it's going to be square root of forty, uh, four hundred something thousand. But anyway, if you do this, uh, do the math, it's going to be roughly uh, seven hundred meter per second. Uh, by the way, the average uh, speed of O2 and N2 are um, close to each other, roughly 500 meter per second. And basically you just multiply uh, 500 by uh, square root of 2. It's because uh, the reduced mass mu is roughly half of the mass of the O2 and it's also half of the mass of N2. So roughly 700 meter per second. So this guy again, I'm going to plug in 700 here. Okay, very important here, 700 meter per second. And uh, about this uh, uh, collisional sectional area, which is pi times uh, two angstroms plus two angstroms squared. And again, um, a pi is roughly 3.1 times uh, four. Uh, four squared, uh, which is 16. So it's roughly 50 times 10 to the power of uh, negative 20. Uh, square meter. Uh, why 10 to the power of negative 20? Uh, one angstrom is uh, 10 to the power of negative 10 meter. And we squared it. So over here, I'm going to have this sigma written here. It's, uh, it's 5 times 10 to the power of negative 19 here. All right? And, uh, and then uh, we'll have to uh, worry about uh, uh, this guy and this guy. So uh, it's pretty easy. We just need to know the number density of the air. And then multiply that by 80%, we get nitrogen. Multiply that by 20%, and we, we get oxygen. So how about air? Uh, air over the volume of the room. Uh, basically, it's just the number of uh, uh, air molecules inside this room. It's just the Avogadro constant. This is Avogadro constant, 6 times 10 to the power 23 uh, times the moles of air. And if you pay attention to uh, uh, even general chemistry, you know this N over V is simply P over RT using ideal gas law. So it's a Gadot constant times P over RT. Uh, we need to compute this. So this Gadot constant is 10 to the power of 23. Pressure, well, I'm going to assume it's one bar roughly. And R is 8.3, T is 300. Again, the room temperature is roughly 300 Kelvin. So we just do some uh, numerical calculation here. Again, I did not even write the unit for any number here because I was using the SI units for all variables. So if you do uh, some computation here, um, I think this is roughly 2,500. And uh, if you do this divided by this, you get 40. 40 times this. And uh, I'll put the answer here, 2.4 times 10 to the power 25. And what's the unit? It's actually uh, just uh, 2.4 times 10 to the power of 25 air molecules per cubic meter. All right? And then we have nitrogen 2. If we have nitrogen 2, use 80% multiplied by this. We have O2, which is 20% multiplied by this. So I'm going to plug in this 80% times 2.4 times 10 to the power of 25. Over here, it's 20% times 2.4 times 10 to the power of 25. So again, this number is the number of uh, air molecules per cubic meter times 20% that give you the number density of O2. This number multiplied by 80%. That will give you the number density of N2. So, All right, so we have uh, seven times 10 to the power of two. In meter per second, that's the relative speed, times 5, times 10 to the power of negative 19. That's the uh, collisional sectional area uh, in the unit of meter squared, times uh, this guy is, uh, uh, okay, 80% times 2.4, that's roughly 2, times 10 to the power of 25. And this is the number density of nitrogen. You have 2 times 10 to the power of 25 nitrogen molecules per cubic meter. Over here, 
Forty percent times uh, two point uh, four. I would say it's roughly zero point five, ten to the power twenty five. Okay. Again, this number is the number density of the oxygen molecules. You have point five times ten to the power twenty five oxygen molecules per cubic meter. So this whole thing will give you the total collisional frequency per unit volume and what collisions between O2 and N2 and what the uh, what what the unit is it's uh, 7 to the power of negative 1 and uh, meter to the power of uh, negative 3 again it's total number of collisions per second per cubic meter and how do you uh, compute this 2 and 0.5 cancel and uh, over here you get 35 and then we look at the order of magnitude 25 25 that's 50 50 minus 19 31 33 so thir 35 times 10 to the power of 33 per second per cubic meter or it's 3.5 times 10 to the power of uh, positive 34 per second and per cubic meter that's the total Rational frequency per unit volume. It does not have to be the electrical room as long as you have the room temperature, you have one bar air, you get this total correlational frequency. And then the last step is to have this number, the total correlational frequency per unit volume multiplied by the actual volume of the room, which is uh, 90 cubic meter. We computed this before. The room is 5.5 by 5.5 by 3, roughly 90. And then a 50 minute time period. That's 3,000 seconds. So I'm going to erase the title here. It's going to be 3.5 times 10 to the power of 34 collisions per second period per cubic meter multiplied by the volume of the room, 90 cubic meter, the time period, 3,000 seconds. Second and second cancel, cubic meter and cubic meter cancel. Uh, 3.5 times 3, I would say that's 10, uh, followed by three zeros, that's 10 to the power of 4. And this is going to be 10 to the power of 2, and we just need to count 10 to the power of 4 plus 2, plus 34, it's just 34 plus 2 plus 4 equals 10 to the power of 40. This number is unitless. What does this mean? The total number of collisions between the O2 molecules and the N2 molecules inside a typical lecture room at the Central Washington University within a 50 minute period 10 to the power of 40.